to North American Egg Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak. My returning guest today is from Toulouse, France, and she's been working in agricultural robotics since 2014. Since 2016, she's been co-director of an organization called FIRA, who holds conferences around the globe based on autonomous machinery and robotics in the agriculture space. By supporting the development of autonomous machines, she believes that robots are an important key to the future of agriculture. Fira is now coming back to the U.S. this fall due to the success of last year's show to host the only three-day event for autonomous farming and agriculture robotics. I'd like to welcome Gwendolyn uh, Legrand. Thank you, Gwen, and, and uh, welcome back, and it's so good to see you. Thank you, Christy, for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here today. So first, let's talk about last year's show. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know that. Um, I loved every minute. I love robotics. I love technology and I love seeing all these new things. Um, but what were some of the successes that you saw last year at the show? Well, the first thing is that we expected to make like a small show and to be able to enter the Californian market and to show to Californian farmers what was new in terms of robotics. So, well, it was quite an humble uh, fira that we expected, maybe 300 people that could showcase and uh, that could attend, sorry, and that could be there. But at the end, a thousand of people showed up. It was great. It was as big as the one we do in Europe uh, that has already six edition in Europe. It was the first edition in California. And however, so many people were excited about this. And we know that because we are on this very specific market that is automation and robotics, it makes a huge difference and it's very focused. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it was incredible. I, I remember your surprise when I first got there and how many people showed up and then more people were registering and more people were coming and you were like, now yeah. we're up to this amount. And now we're up to this amount. It was so <laughs> exciting. And, uh, and, and the format was really great too. Uh, so when and where is Fear USA? Um, I know there's a, a location change, right? Yeah, you're right. Actually, we're changing and we are making FIRA traveling events to California because we want to go like very close to the farmer's needs and to the different crop types that are everywhere in California. So last year we were in Fresno in Central Valley. Now we are in Salinas for the 2023 edition. Uh, and Salinas is very nice. Like we know it's the salad bowl of the world. So it's something different and very exciting too. And this year, what is exciting too is the location that will be in the um, Salinas uh, Sport Complex. That is the home of uh, the Rio Salinas. So it's in the arena. You will have all the exhibitors in the arena that will be showcasing their innovations. Uh, at the same place, there will be also, you know, some nice rooms for the panel discussions, the pitches, etc. And behind the arena, just you can go two minutes by walk and see the demos running during the, the two days of the, the exhibition time. So three days event, take an education day for day one with all related to uh, research projects, education, FFA will be there too. So that's very exciting for us. The first time they will be involved uh, and the day two and three, it's more about exhibition, panel discussions and demo. Yeah, that's great. And last year, I really enjoyed the bus tour uh, to see everything in action. Uh, I, I think it's going to be great though, to have it all in one place. Yeah. Um, it, I think because there were just so many people, it was hard to see everything last year, but I think this year, I think the setup sounds, sounds incredible. Um, but how, how are you preparing to have everything at the fairgrounds? You said, are they, they're growing the crops there? Is that what's happening? Yeah. For vegetables, there will be growing crops over there. Uh, wow. We have the chance to be partnering with the university of California, with the uh, Pacific Ag Rentals and with Triangle. Uh, there are three involved in the organization of the demo zone uh, for growing crops, vegetables, and some fruits. And we are also making sure that we will have like, you know, this kind of trees in pots and also, let's say, fake vineyards to make sure that the robots that are running in those crops can also demoing and showing what are the functions of their robots. Wonderful. And... Uh... How many exhibitors do you think are going to be attending? 
Oh, wow. We think between uh, 50 and 70 exhibitors will oh. be there. Very total, good. Yeah, not only uh, robot manufacturers were also expecting to have like, you know, the relating um, organization that are working in the area, in the, mm -hmm. in the industry, and also some technology suppliers. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Sensors, cameras, you know, these yeah. kind of things. Right. And are you focusing on, on the robotics industry-wide or are you more focused on one segment or another? No. Well, if you mean that we are like focused more on a crop or another, or what do you mm, really yeah. mean by that? Yeah. Well, no, it's like really... What we aim with uh, Fiora is to find the right solution for the right issue. Uh, we all know that there is this big labor issue in uh, the agriculture in general. We all know that uh, agriculture has a big impact on the environmental uh, issues and so on. And we really think that robotics can bring a part of the solutions so it means that for maybe uh, for vegetables and for all the um, tree fruits, but also for vineyards and for any kind actually of crops or even uh, for, for the animals. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. And I, I'm assuming that there's a lot of draw for the large producer, but what about the smaller family farm? Is there new technology out there for smaller operations? Yeah, you, you can also see those very like more smaller robots that can be used especially for uh, some of them for picking fruits mm -hmm. and some of them. And I think that's really important too for mechanical weeding, for example, there are very small ones that can be used in small farms. Uh, you also have those nice robots that are like kind of scooting robots or carrying robots that can help you when you're, you know, uh, harvest you need to have some help and you cannot carry all those um, loadings and those robots can help you too so there are also solutions for small farms right that's good and something that I found that was really interesting last year was the the open discussion and collaboration between companies between manufacturers uh, and the development developers of this technology why do you think these modern companies are really ready to bring their ideas to the table in the open. It seems like a change from, from the past. I think, and since the beginning that we are organizing this event in 2016, we see that the collaboration is a key part of right. the development of the industry. And uh, I think they have in mind that if they don't collaborate, uh, the market won't be that uh, ready. Uh, so soon. Uh, they first need to collaborate to make sure that legislators are aware of what they are doing in terms of safety, uh, to collaborate with the legislator to make sure that um, the safety issue is taken into account from their side, from both sides actually, and that they understand each other. So they have to be really joined for that point. Uh, also, I think in terms of technologies, because they are uh, developing some technologies with the technology suppliers and that's nice to see that also technology suppliers that are developing some good parts with some manufacturers can also use them for other manufacturers uh, to help them developing and last thing and i think that's not the least is uh, the readiness of the farmers i mean at one point they are the end users they need to make sure that the robots are the right solutions for their needs and what we really and very often see that the farmers are trying several different type of robots. Mm -hmm. They don't choose only one. Sometimes they combine different kind of robots, different from different manufacturers. So it's, yeah, it's a nice thing to see that this industry is really collaborating. Yeah, that's it. And, and like you said that I, it was remarkable that in almost every conversation it ended with, well, if we don't serve the farmer, it doesn't matter how cool the product is or how much technology or what it can do. If we're not serving, if we're not solving something on the farm. And uh, I really like that, that really direct pinpointed, you know, we're not just inventing things to, for the sake of inventing things. Um, it's really to serve the farmer and the industry. Right? Exactly. 
it's yeah. a new era i would say i always say that actually we we've seen the tractors arriving a few like dozens of years ago and uh, now the new era of machinery i think is uh is robotics mm -hmm. so we will still have uh tractors but tractors will be more and more autonomous first we already see that so i mean it's not new uh and now those smaller machines with the robots that are taking like very precise functions again is a new era and it's also making a new job for the farmers they will be more like even more entrepreneur uh, entrepreneur they will be even more decision maker mm -hmm. with the right data that are coming from the robots right yeah, that's great. And there's a there are topics for each day of the show. Can you tell me about those? Yeah, sure. So first day is dedicated to the Tech and Education Day. Um, it's mainly run by the University of California, INR and the Vine. Uh, they're organizing a very nice program, a very nice ad agenda with the call for abstracts that will select the most promising um, research projects in terms of automation for farming. We will also have during this day some very nice panel discussions in terms of R&D. Uh, during the first afternoon too, we will open the exhibition zone uh, for the participants. And also we are very happy to welcome the SFA kids that will be also involved in the first day. They will have the opportunity to, to watch a nice robots parade uh on the first day in the afternoon we will have those uh this cocktail and this uh, after school time so well everything about education research and development for the first day day two and day three we will have the exhibition zone again open and the starting of the demos again in vegetables fruits uh vineyards and trees uh the panel discussions some innovation uh during pitches we also have so many things, actually, Chrissy, that's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm also thinking that we will be organizing the first uh, pitch station from startups to investors. So mm -hmm. it's brand new. We've done it uh, last uh, edition in Europe. It was in February. It was great because we had almost 40, 40 startups that participated. 20, uh, no, it was 12 were selected to pitch in front of investors only to make sure that they could present their, their, their startups and their innovation to potential investors. So it's also a very nice thing. Yeah, for sure. And FIRA really takes its part seriously in addressing the need for more efficient food production. What, but you have a unique perspective where you can, you're seeing Europe and North America so where do you think North America stands compared to Europe? Are there any differences? Well, when we see the figures and there are many, you know, market surveys that are working on that, Europe and America are very close by deep. And sometimes mm -hmm. uh, USA is first and sometimes uh, Europe is first and uh, USA is second. would we'll say it's like very, very close in terms of potential markets. However, the market is different. You know that in Europe, we have very like smaller farms, more family farms with less employees. So we, they, the, 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 the robots don't address the exact same uh, needs, I would say. Uh, the revenues are not the same either. So the potential budget is not the same. So the proposal uh, cannot be the same from the manufacturers, I would say. Um, there is also the thing about the legislation that it is different from uh, from one part of the world to the other. So, well, they are both very, very interesting markets, and it's not a surprise that some European manufacturers are coming in the US and particularly in California. And manufacturers from California are starting to come in Europe. We know some of them that are making some nice business trips uh, here in Europe. So that's really nice to see the dynamic around that. Amazing. That's uh, that's really interesting. And so where can people find you, both producers uh, who want to register and potential exhibitors that are interested in, uh, in coming too? 
Yes, sure. So, um, well, our website is, is open to have all the information. It's uh, FiraUSA.com. You can see it's from, you can see here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can find all the information there to register as a participant. We also have some nice place for booths or for sponsoring. So everything is still open. Uh, for partnering, the end is July the 3rd. So you still have time, but we are more than happy to welcome you. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much, Gwen, for joining me today. It's great to see you. And I really can't wait to see you in person again in September. Yeah, me too, Christy. Thank you so much for your involvement. And thanks to all who are watching or listening. Uh, go on over to the website. All the links are provided in the show notes and get registered today. Don't forget to subscribe to North American Egg Spotlight on YouTube, Rumble, or Telegram. And the podcast is available on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you like the episode, give it a share. Have a great day.